Yesterday was the long-awaited Triple-I Initiative Indie Game Showcase. 45 minutes of uninterrupted trailers and announcements. Here's all the best stuff, in my opinion, that was shown off. Starting with the big one, Slay the Spire 2 was announced along with a gorgeous teaser trailer, a Steam page, and a 2025 early access launch window. It's kind of a getting the team back together montage, but there will also be new characters to play as, including the Necrobinder. Players will return to the tower a thousand years in the future where new enemies and relics await. There might be some stuff in here for a more qualified fan to pick apart, however, I personally think it looks like Slay the Spire, but a little bit better. The game's being made in a new engine, with more features and modability planned, and updated visuals that I can't get enough of. All in all, a great way to kick off the showcase, if you ask me. And we now have a release date for Gestalt, Steam, and Cinder, May 21st. A brand new demo also went live yesterday, I'm about to go play it, but all you need to know is, this is a steampunk metroidvania with some very juicy pixel art. It seems to be a very combat heavy, with a big old skill tree and tons of special powers. You'll also get to meet the many citizens of the steam city as you do side jobs for them and fight for mankind's survival. The usual video game stuff. I really hope that the lore of this world goes super in-depth because just from the trailer, the game has a pretty unique setting and style that I'd love to learn more about. It's a good thing we only have to wait one more month. Up next, we have three pretty insane crossovers, starting with a Risk of Rain 2 free content update featuring Dead Cells, neither of which I've played yet, but I know they each have very passionate and dedicated communities. I'm sure that if you follow the game, then you already know about the upcoming DLC, Seekers of the Storm, coming soon, but this smaller free update called Devotion will be out before the DLC. And both of these games are currently in a bundle, which is very tempting. If you'd like to star in your very own crossover with no caps, then consider checking out my Patreon newsletter linked below, and a big thank you if you already have. Vampire Survivors now has guns. This is a crossover with Contra of all franchises, and even if this isn't your kind of game, you have to admit it certainly broke some sort of mold. I mean, there is even an Among Us crossover, and the DLCs are at least fairly priced. I played Vampire Survivors back when it was still only $3, and I doubt I'd ever actually buy a DLC for the game, but it's definitely come a long way, and it now has over 200 achievements. I did 100% it at one point, not anymore. The last crossover is also vampire-themed, Castlevania will be appearing in V Rising. And this is all perfect timing because I just so happen to be working on a video all about vampire games, so expect to sink your teeth into that sometime next week. I haven't been following V Rising too closely, but it's set to come out of early access on May 8th, and it looks kinda cool in this trailer, honestly. I'll have to check out some reviews of the full game next month, but if you played it at all, let me know how it is. If you prefer silly shenanigans and cars and other vehicles, you can now download the demo for What the Car. The full game comes out in September, and it's sort of a follow-up to What the Golf. As a car with legs, you'll roll, sprint, jump, fly, and sneeze your way to victory in hundreds of levels, and do pretty much everything you can't do in a normal racing game. The perfect thing to play for when you don't want to have to think or strategize or solve puzzles, just do whatever random activities you find out in the world and go with the flow. Cat Quest 3, still coming out sometime in 2024, showed off its opening animation. It's a 2.5D action RPG about pirate cats, so basically the best premise ever. It also features local co-op, therefore I need to find someone and convince them to join my crew. Although I haven't personally played them, the first two games in the series have very positive reviews and I do plan on jumping on board whenever Cat Quest 3 launches. Both this game and What the Car are just so video gamey, don't take themselves seriously at all, and because of that, they're the title that stand out to me the most on this list. And getting close to the end, Hyper Light Breaker showed off a new mini boss called the Flame Wizard. I thought for sure we'd also get an early access release date, but it's still just slated for the summer. I know there are a lot of mixed feelings about this being a roguelite. 
Personally, I was a little bit bummed after hearing this at first, but the last game I played in the genre was Hades, which is now one of my favorite games ever. So I feel like it's more of a genre fatigue thing than it is actually disliking the genre, at least for me. Regardless of your stance, the world is still super intriguing, and I think we are in pretty safe hands with Heart Machine. And yep, yeah, sorry, another roguelite to end the video, but it is a Prince of Persia game, which I was not expecting at all. It's got a really crisp and minimalist style. I feel like the characters here have to be 3D models the way that they're moving. It comes out on May 14th, actually, and while I'm not over the moon excited, I really hope this means we keep getting more games from the franchise spanning all different genres and styles. That does it for my Triple I Showcase recap. Let me know which games stood out to you. I couldn't possibly cover them all here, so I may have missed a hidden gem or two. And until next time, check these out.